Hi there, it's Tony again, and uh, we're back on the bench. And uh, today we're going to be getting into this uh, Garcia Mitchell 402 saltwater uh, spinning reel. And uh, I've recently serviced this reel, but we're going to talk about uh, all the steps to do the take apart, the cleaning, the lubing, and uh, the reassembly, basically, in a nutshell. Uh, I've been knocking out a lot of these lately. I recently also did the 302. Uh, which is a, a classic, and as you can see, they're they're very similar. They're very similar in size, and uh, uh, really the biggest difference is uh, the 402 has the high speed uh, gear set, uh, whereas the 302 is the standard. Uh, so uh, we're gonna get into this though, and uh, we're gonna show you all the all the steps to uh, take it apart and uh, to do all the maintenance on it. So we'll start with uh, taking the screw off here and uh, take this cap off like so. And then you got a, uh, a spring here that you need to take off. Unscrew this cap. So this is an all metal drag kit. There is no fiber washers in this drag kit at all. So I'm going to show you what each one of these looks like. I'm going to pull them out one by one just so you can be familiar with those. But it does matter how they go back in. So um, I recommend just having the schematic on hand so that you can see uh, how that goes. You can see that all these washers are, are different. And there's also a nylon uh, washer down here as well. Um, and uh, just a little, little spacer washer there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's your spool. And uh, we can put that out of the way. Uh, so now um, we'll take our handle off right now because that's uh, going to get in our way. And just unscrew that like so. Uh, you need two wrenches uh, to get the rotor off. So you need a 9 mil and a 14 mil down here at the bottom. So uh, you should be able to turn counterclockwise on that and pull that piece off and then take your 14 mil nut off. But yeah, this is a, a great, great reel. Uh, great for surf fishing, obviously. That's, uh, that's, that's how these were. Um, uh, so popular um, when they were made. The the 402 came along in the 60s, about 10 or so years later after the 302, uh, but uh, they're both very popular models. So at this point, you can pull off your rotor completely. We're just going to put that off to the side. And now we can actually uh, see uh, the top of our bearing, uh, our ball bearing, and uh, we can't see the ball bearings because they're they're visible from underneath. Uh, but there uh, there's there's two screws here, uh, set screws uh, that you screw in that uh, hold the bearing down, basically hold it in place. And then there's also the centering key right here, and that centering key is to help you line up uh, your rotor right there. So that's just a couple of little things. Another thing to note on the 402 and the 403, which is the right-handled uh, version of this reel, is there are a couple of rings uh, in here. There's a top ring and a, a spring washer underneath. Uh, we're going to try just to leave those in there, but just note that they are there. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll get into taking our, uh, our plates off, though, and uh, seeing uh, what things look like under there. Yeah, I've been working on a lot of Garcia Mitchells lately uh, during this downtime here, and um, it's a great opportunity to clean up some of these old vintage reels. Uh, and uh, the, the 302 uh, I've been using for a number of years, and that's been a great workhorse of a reel. Uh, this 402 I picked up some years back, and... Uh, it's uh, kind of been sitting, unfortunately, and I've been meaning to service it uh, so that I could actually uh, maybe try it out one day or put it in a display case or something. So um, hopefully uh, that time will come to pass now.
So you got your four screws that come off and then you got your plate. And just as a reminder, I've already uh, serviced this, and so it, you know it's relatively clean. But imagine that you were taking this apart for the first time, and there was a bunch of gunk uh, and gummed up uh, lube in here. Well, you want to clean that off, obviously. So what I do is I get uh, all these pieces and parts uh, completely taken apart, dump it all in a in a tray or something like that, and just uh, pour a bunch of WD-40 over it, essentially. Uh, so that, um, you know, that uh, penetrating oil can sink in and uh, do its job, essentially. So so we're going to go to the other side now. We're going to take out our, our four screws. Note that these four screws are different uh, from the uh, previous side. I want to make note of that. That's why I like having these little parts trays kicking around so that uh, I can... Uh, the rest of... Uh, the rest of these uh, screws will come out and we'll, uh, we'll see the main gear side and uh, see what that all looks like underneath there. So at this point you should be able to just gently pull your gear set out and you can see what that looks like. And so what I do here is uh, I basically take out the main gear itself, uh, this uh, inner ring, and then this uh, this wheel here. I pull all those pieces out and uh, clean those up real good and then get them ready to be repacked with uh, fresh grease. Um, and then I also clean up uh, the dog uh, and dog spring area down here and apply a couple little beads of oil uh, at these pivot points. And uh, that's pretty much it uh, for that section. So uh, we'll just set that down gently. And now you can see uh, the insides here and uh, you can see what's going on. And uh, basically, if you want to get uh, your pinion shaft out, all you need to do is take this screw out right here and make sure that you back out those those two upper screws up here that uh, that are keeping your your bearing in place, and then you should uh, in fact be able to uh, uh, move uh, this this whole shaft uh, down and out uh, of the uh, of the entire casing basically. Now, in the event that you cannot remove uh, the bearing. Uh, in here the ball bearing or get access to it. What I have found helps is uh, you just spray Underneath here with a bunch of WD-40 clean it up really good and then you can actually see the bearings uh, from here with this all uh, Like this basically and as long as you can see them and you can get to them with a little bead of oil or something like that That's really all that you need to do um, if the bearing is seized up Then you got to get it out and you got to find a way to replace it in this case, uh, for this reel, that was not the case. So uh, that's um, that's pretty much it, though. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, you want to make sure that you clean up your parts the best that you possibly can. You don't want dirty parts. You don't want old grease in there. So uh, that's uh, those are just some of the some of the basics and the standards of just doing real maintenance is having good, solid, clean parts. So. So now we're ready to uh, piece all this back together, so I'll show you how that works. And so you need to have these two outer holes in this slot kind of lined up the best that you can uh, with those two uh, points that stick out and the one that's here. And this takes a little bit of work sometimes, but it can be done. Uh, you just have to be patient, and uh, you just want to set uh, this in place, basically, and get... Uh, Get those lined up, and once you're uh, you're in place, then you can uh, you can get it all together. So I'm just going to try to slide this into position here. You can see it's a little bit of uh, it's a little bit of guesswork, and uh, you just kind of have to feel it out carefully. I think that's it right there.
And then once you have uh, all those pins in position, uh, you can uh, put your screws in. And take all these out again. Yeah, when I'm working on saltwater reels like this, I pretty much only use uh, pens, uh, precision blue grease. Um, it's uh, it, it's a good uh, good grease uh, for this kind of application. Um, and then I will make the use of some oil, uh, but make sure that it's real oil. Don't use three-in-one oil to put on. I only use three-in-one oil primarily to use on threads, like these screws. I'll, I'll put three-in-one oil on these on these screw threads, perhaps. But I, that's pretty much all I, I'll use three-in-one oil for when it comes to working on reels. Uh, but uh, you, you definitely should be using a synthetic kind of oil um, if you're going to be using it on moving parts on on. Uh, on any kind of lever or spring or anything like that. So just make note of that. And, uh, and it's worth it. It's worth it to, to use those products. I'll put these, uh, back into place here. But as you can see, the craftsmanship, uh, on these reels are solid. These were made in France and, um, they're, uh, they're definitely, uh, tanks. Okay. So now, uh, we can, uh, put our other side plate back on into position. Let's go like so, get our screws out, put those in. And yeah, this uh, particular reel is obviously quite clean, um, which is not always the case, uh, meaning on the outside, you know, you see a lot of these reels and a lot of the paint's missing or they've been repainted. Um, and uh, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's usually a, a common thing to find with these because they're, they're used so, so much in uh, salt water and the salt water just destroys everything. Okay, so now uh, we can put our, uh, our rotor back into place. And uh, one little note about the rotor, uh, I usually do uh, spray this down with some WD-40 in here or some deep creep, any kind of penetrating lubricant type stuff, and definitely hit up these springs and these, uh, these little pivot points in here uh, so that those uh, components are working properly for your bale. Uh, but going to put the rotor back on, don't forget you've got your key now and you have to have your key lined up here uh, accordingly. And that's a, that's really, really important. I've lost those keys before uh, because it's not lined up right and then you, uh, you wind up losing them. So sometimes I'll just put my head under here and make sure that that's going to go on straight uh, so that nothing gets out of place. So now you can put your, your 14 mil nut back on. It doesn't hurt to apply a, a little bead of uh, some oil or some lube here on the shaft uh, usually. Um, and then just turn this down a little bit. You don't need to torque anything down. It's not necessary. And then you put your cap back on here with your fiber washer. And we've got the 9 mil for that. Just give that a little turn. It's all good there. So now uh, we can uh, put our, our drag stack back into place here. And I'm going to show you how you do that. And just put these back exactly the way that they were, essentially. And uh, another good practice is to also just put the spool back on uh, so that it just makes it a little easier for these uh, to line up usually. Uh, but uh, you just uh, put all these uh, back in. The opposite of uh, the way that they came off. Uh, no uh, grease or lubricants on this. Uh, they're they're all metal, um, and uh, they're not designed uh, to have anything extra on them. They're they're just designed to to be the way that they are. So.
just gotta turn this guy in there a little bit more. Get it to sink down. That's about right there. There we go. Put your spring on. Put the cap here back into place. Give that a couple of turns so that you got just a little bit of tension on there, not a lot or anything. Don't torque it down. Put that little that little spring back into place there. And then put your uh, your cap back on with your screw. Give that a couple of turns gently. And uh, put your handle on. Like so. Uh, cinch it down a little bit. And uh, there you have it. So uh, that's the uh, take apart and uh, the, the maintenance tips and the reassembly uh, of the uh, Garcia Mitchell 402 saltwater reel. Uh, so uh, this is Tony with Back on the Bench. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if uh, you'd like to see more. We'll uh, see you next time.